and we're back for another podcast. Uh, I don't know what we're up to, Ben. Is this eight? I think number eight. Yes. Number so eight. we're back to podcast episode eight. We're remote. First time we've ever done this. So if the sound isn't very good, probably will be the last time we do this. But uh, we are on the road actually right now. We're heading to Buffalo County, Wisconsin. Um, we're actually heading there for kind of multitasking today. We've got, I don't know, some, some people probably know, some people maybe don't know, but uh, we have another brand within our company. Like we're obviously dog driven, but um, we are the core of our business started out because we're pretty passionate deer hunters. Um, we've got another product, another brand. Uh, it's the Hold Egg brand, Hold Egg Outdoors brand, but one of the products underneath it is called the Licking Stick. If you are a deer hunter, uh, I would check it out. I think it's really cool. It's something that uh, you can find out more information about it, but it's something that a friend of mine stumbled upon. Um, I worked on it with him to develop it. Um, I patented it, and we took it to market last year. That was the patent came in 2009. So, but it's the Licking Stick. It's a really cool project. We're on our way to Buffalo County. Spend a day setting them up documenting it, filming it, putting a bunch of video stuff together. Um, so we ran out of time yesterday when we were at our warehouse to do the podcast. And Ben said, why don't we just do it in the truck on the way over? So we're going to, that's what we're doing. Uh, we're also doing things, we're, we're doing something different. We're, we've been recording some of them. Um, we're going to start recording all of them, uh, including this one. And we're going to be using the podcast on another platform. So we're going to almost treat them like a vlog. Uh, we're going to be able to have the information because I think the information is valuable. That's the, the, the important part about, uh, about podcasts. And so we're going to have it where you can, you can access it probably through a YouTube channel is what we were talking about. But, um, so that's, that's something kind of new too. So this one, I want to talk about it's a, it's a question that comes up oftentimes. It wasn't one specific recently. Um, get lots of questions about them. It's also something that we're going to use this chance to kind of get a bunch of information to you on how you can find more information that we have out there. Um, but the topic is hold conditioning. And so hold conditioning is absolutely essential if you're going to have a retriever. You have to have it. If you don't have it, uh, it will become a big issue. So when I say have it, I mean a solid delivery. I mean a dog that delivers the hand without dropping, without dropping short, without being hard-mouthed and mouthy, without running off, without making big victory laps when they come in to retrieve. Like, all these different things are problems that hold conditioning will typically fix. So, so hold conditioning itself is a must. It's also one of the parts of retriever training that I just don't like. It's one that I put off a lot. Um, I put it off because it's just not, I don't know why I, I don't like it that much. Whenever I get done with it, I always say, I wonder why I just didn't do it earlier. Um, I do think you have to wait for a certain period of time. You can't do it before they're done teething. So dogs got to be done teething. But it's it's this process that once I do it, it seems like everything accelerates in training. Like we really move forward. And so that is an exciting part of it. It allows me to, to do the stuff that I want to do down the road. Now, as far as hold conditioning goes, so... We're going to do this podcast about it. Part of the reason why we're doing it is because it's just been a topic that's come up a lot recently. It's, it's, I just wrote an article. I write, I write articles for the Badger Sportsman. So I've got this column. It's called Dog's Eye View. It's, uh, we do articles for them. Well, I just wrote this article, and the article, um, it hasn't been published yet. I just sent it in was it's it's I forget what I titled it something about no need for force or no reason for to force things 
And the reason I wrote about it is because there's a lot of people that I don't think realize truly that the style of training that that I prefer and use is very, it, it's not no force. It's very little force. It's not excessive force. We don't use force fetch. So that's why I'm talking about it now because hold conditioning gives you what force fetch gives a, a handler working their dogs. So force fetch is the way that everybody thinks you got to do it. Forced fetch. Some people call it force fetch, whatever you want to call it. Today they call it trained retrieve. A lot of people are starting to call it trained retrieve. And I think it's because it just sounds better. Forced fetch, I think, is nasty. I think it's unnecessary. I think it's compromising. I think it I think it breaks down trust. I, I, I'm not big on fear tactics. And I'm not big on avoidance training. And that's what that is. So, hold conditioning gives me the same results, which is a solid delivery to hand without the risk of of minimizing or losing trust that my dog has in me and I have in the dog. I just think, I I also think hold conditioning, I talk a lot about feel with a dog and I talk about it um, when it comes to heel work. Um, I talk about how, how valuable solid heel work is because I think what it does is it It builds a connection with you and your dog. Hold conditioning does that as well. It's a totally different process. But going through it, you come out of it understanding your dog a lot better, understanding how to be able to read your dog a lot better. And I think your dog learns a lot from you and learns a lot of things about you. And And it allows the trust to be there on both ends. So that's where I put so much value. That's why I put so much value on it. From like a deeper, bigger picture thing, the the micro value out of that is I get good delivery. So I get a dog that picks something up and they just can't spit it out or put it down until I tell them to. And they bring it to me and it's, you know, it kind of looks nice and all that stuff, but it's functional. And that's why I like it. I don't care about some some people get to the point where they want dogs you know to come in and, and swing into the side and that's ESPN stuff I don't care about that I don't care what it looks like I actually prefer dogs coming right to me um, facing me so we're facing face to face they'll sit and lift their head up and that's how I prefer a delivery but if you want them to deliver to the side you can get you can get to that too but um, so couple of places that I think you can get some good information so that so we're we're talking about hold conditioning 30 minute podcast not going to be able to cover hold conditioning completely I think this is just a little bit of a um, some ideas about it some 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 big oversight overviews of it the another spot is going to be in that article that I just wrote that's not just about hold conditioning that's about forcing using force um, but I talk about hold conditioning in it where I talk about force fetching it. Another spot that we did a shed DVD recently. Um, and it came out, it came out, I don't know, probably four or five months ago. A new shed DVD, replacing our old one. Our old one was 48 minutes long, 52 minutes long, something like that. Uh, the new one is over three and a half hours. It's the same content. It's just been expanded on because I just felt like the first DVD we did, I didn't think it covered the process the way it should be as well as it should be or as in depth so we redid it so in the first shed dvd we talked about hold conditioning for a real short period i mean it was just like a one chapter and it was maybe 10 minutes of the of the 52 minutes which percentage wise was over 20 percent of the video i mean it was a pretty pretty good chunk of it well when we filmed the second one we got to the point we filmed hold conditioning part of it and we ended up it took it was over an hour and so when you added that into the dvd it would have been four and a half hours long well that's too long like they don't make dvds that big so we took that hold conditioning part and we broke it out into its separate video well 
it's an over an hour long and it's just on hold conditioning and now what we've done is we've taken it and we you buy the shed dvd you get the hold conditioning d for free well i'm not the techiest guy and neither is our company so we had a hard time figuring out how to get it available to people that have bought the shed dvd so here's what we did anyone can see it it's free so it's an hour long produced dvd and what we did was we put it on our website and up at the top of our home page is a tab that says hold conditioning what does it say free hold conditioning video or something like that yeah it's up on the top row you can click on it it's not a public page but it's a private youtube channel so you can just click on it and you can watch it any of you guys listening right now so this is also for anyone who has bought the shed dvd and watches it there's a part in it that i explain this hey we didn't include it in this video because it'd be too long and it would take the emphasis off but go to our website and you'll get more information on how to get your down you know your your version of it so we also have the product in our product store it's a separate product it's downloadable but there you don't have to buy it anymore so we've changed this so you can go to that downloadable dvd that's on our website you click on it like you're going to purchase it you go to the uh, checkout and then use a coupon code and the coupon code is no force n-o-f-o-r-c-e no force now you've got it for free and it's a downloadable version so then what you can do is you can take it and you can put it onto any device you have now it takes up a lot of space so you're gonna have to have room but um you guys probably know more about it than I do. But you can download it to your computer, you can download it to your phone, or you can watch it on YouTube. If you have internet, you can watch it on YouTube on your phone. But it's, I think, a, a real good um, piece of information that explains the process. It also um, shows you, because I use, I don't know, I use three or four different dogs in it that are in different spots. Spry, if you remember live with Spry, Spry, is in on that video for early on hold conditioning so anyway that's a good source for you to find more information on it another thing that we're doing right now if you follow our instagram at all i don't know if we put anything on facebook yet but uh if you follow our social pages i gotta pay attention while i'm driving here uh and anyone who's watching right now or listening right now i'm not looking at anything i'm driving the car ben's in charge of all the mechanical stuff, technical stuff. But um, on our social, on Instagram, we are starting another, yet another project. And so what we're doing is I've got four dogs right now that are going through hold conditioning, going through the hold conditioning process. It's uh, Tito, Elsa, Moja, and Cody. And so we are filming that. Uh, Ben is with me and he's documenting the entire thing for all four dogs then we've got a buddy his name is Joe Shedd good dude really good dude he's we've worked with him on other projects we're working on another project with him and so we're we're using the information that we gather from these four dogs in the whole conditioning process we're teaming up with him on another project and I'll let you guys in on that one later when it gets closer to what we're we're going to be able to talk more about it but so we've got like four or five things going all the right now talking about hold conditioning and my hope is that there's a lot of different ways for people to get the information and some people will get it all and some people will just pick and choose what works for them um but between all the stuff we're doing around the process of hold conditioning a, I hope it's a real clear thing that I just think it's that important. And B, I think people really struggle with it. I think some people struggle with it because they just don't know how to do it. Most people just don't know how to do it. And I think the other part of it that, that really bugs me and is why we're doing what so we're putting so much effort into putting this out there is I think most people think the fix is force fetching dogs all the time and they think force fetch is the key and I think the problem with it is is whenever I've asked people that that totally stand you know force fetch force fetch force fetch force fetch it just 
That's 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 it for them. Well, I've asked, why do you think why do you think why do you think that's the only way to do that? And the answer that I get is because that's the way we've always done it. That's the way I was taught. That's the way they always did it. So we always did it before me. Well, there's a lot of things that we used to do, and it used to be the way we would do things, and we don't anymore because there's better ways of doing it. And we just realized it. And so I think people just don't know about that you can get away with this, get the same results without having to do what Force Fetch does to dogs. And so that's why we're pushing this as hard as we are. So there's your, there's your backstory on it. Now I'll just get into a little bit of the detail end of it. But so for, so what is, what is hold conditioning? It's a process that we go through that's going to take a dog and I actually think it's borderline brainwashing them a little bit like it's it it gets them mentally to not be able to once they pick something up they can't they just can't set it down they physically can't do it their body won't let them spit that thing out and it's because through repetition and consistency through this process we're going to get them to understand get something in my mouth which they do naturally think about it these dogs retrieve naturally my, my dogs are, are labs that we're training right now but we've trained all sorts of them and a lot of them have the word retriever in their name like retrievers retrieve I don't train dogs to retrieve I just simply bring it out well that's something that they do they don't necessarily do it as polished as we would want and why do we want a dog that's going to hold and deliver well if you're a gun dog guy or a bird dog guy <clears throat> if your dog picks up a cripple we don't want that dog letting dropping it short of us let's say you wing a, a rooster there's a lot of times where you knock them down and they'll hit the ground and they'll run well if that's the case there can be a lot of time put into trying to track down and trail that bird dog picks it up catches it brings it back this is my turn here. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> You're going to have to edit this out. Um, so if the dog drops a cripple and it runs off, it could take a long time and you could lose birds. Dry, hot conditions, poor tracking, might lose a bird. Dog catches the bird, brings it back. The you want that dog holding until it gets to you so you can get a hold of that bird. If they get in this habit where they want to drop it short of you every time, five yards, five feet, one step, it really doesn't matter. But they're dropping short, bird hits the ground and takes off, oh, we might be back in for the chase. So we don't want that. We don't want a duck dog getting a hold of a bird that's diving on us and all of a sudden it drops short and bird's underwater now what we wait for a bird to pop up and we can chase it back on for for a shed dog let's say i'm in the woods and my dog picks one up coming back to me and between me and him or it or the dog something else pops up is pretty interesting a lot of if if a dog spits it out to go see what's fresh what's new we might not, he might not go pick it back up and I may have not seen that he had it. So once they find a retrieve, that's a big deal and they need to finish it out. I don't need dogs to pick stuff up and leave them scattered about. So that's part of it. The other part of it is, is I've seen it so often where dogs, they, they run off. Like they get excited, they get it in their mouth and they take off. And they almost, it partially comes back to like a game of keep away. I think, I think when they're little, we, you know, people will chase them with stuff in their mouth. Now all of a sudden dogs think it's fun to get something in their mouth and run away. All habits that I'll back up now and say, hold conditioning happens after they're done teething. So it's anywhere from like four to six months is when they're going to teeth. And I'm saying they're going to lose their puppy teeth, get their adult teeth, not get their puppy teeth. So let's say it's after six months and they've lost their teeth. I think you could start hold conditioning at that point. I wouldn't. I personally like to get them retrieving a little bit without hold conditioning 
just to bring that out because once you start talking about hold then you're going to be pretty particular like you start hold conditioning it's it's you just it's not like it's a 50 50 thing it's it's got to always be which means it's got to be perfect and it's a process and i don't like putting that kind of pressure on a dog that's that young so i would rather have them have some fun build this confidence with the idea of retrieving before i get into asking them to retrieve and have it look pretty have it be polished so i usually get that going for a couple months before i go to hold conditioning so i've done it as early as 10 months i've i've got some right now that are just over a year so 12 to 13 months and we're just starting hold conditioning with them but anyway so so i don't think there's a set period of time that you have to do it in but when you start it it's something that has to be followed through prior to starting it i think you can make your job a whole lot easier by forming good habits early on in training so we talk about when they're little puppies we talk about encouraging little dogs to come to us so I'll get down on my knees or get down on the ground call them to me and i'll encourage them to hold i'll actually start when they're really little hold i don't think means anything the, the words hold doesn't mean anything to them but i'll literally remind them hold 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 and i'll get my hand under, up underneath their chin and i'll kind of share that balled up sock or puppy bumper or whatever it is that they're retrieving to me i'm not in a hurry to just grab it and take it away because i want them to realize bring it in i'm just going to share it with him he gets pretty excited about that he likes that so by doing that and there's a dog right now that i'm training named elsa who she, I've got, of the four dogs I'm doing right now, Elsa is probably the most natural. But she has never had an issue with dropping. She kind of liked the idea of hold. I really reminded her that it was a pretty good thing early on. And it's just stuck with her. So she has, from the very beginning, not I have not had an issue with her. She's not run off. She's not dropped short. Like I've had zero issues that I needed to do hold conditioning with her. But I know eventually it probably will come up. And so I'm just getting it done right now. I'm getting it done because I got these other four or the other three to do. It's just gonna make a nice comparative. So she's super natural. Now Moja, I've got a dog named Moja right now that I'm training for a client. And that, she, I've never had a dog struggle as much as her with the retrieve part. She loves retrieving. She loves going after it. She loves picking it up when it's out there. She does not bring it back. She just wouldn't bring it back, wouldn't bring it back. I mean, like, she's the one that's like almost 13 months. I'm still not getting good retrieves out of her. So I pushed it off, pushed it off, because I just couldn't get much of a retrieve period out of her. So one of the things that I did, which is a similar thing that I did with Spry, if you watch Live with Spry, I took Moja and I waited till we had water, open water. I had her through the winter, so couldn't take her swimming. Got open water, water warmed up a little bit, got her into the water, and I like using the water for, I, usually I don't wanna do anything on the water that I can't do on land, because out on the water I don't have as much control. So I don't I don't wanna, I don't wanna do stuff on water typically until I, they're doing it on land real well. This was the opposite. I put her out on the water because on the water they have less of a tendency to spit a bumper. Once, for whatever reason, when they're swimming and they've got it in their mouth, they will hold onto it typically right up to the end, edge of the water. So what I did was I waited till we had water, open water, made retrieves with her in the water. She did really nice. She still would drop it short. She dropped it five feet out in the water from me, and I just couldn't believe it. That's the first time I've ever seen that. So I stuck with it, uh, didn't force it, tried to figure out ways to get her excitement, use the water. I continued to use the water because she did do better in the water. Um, but just recently, in the last week or two, she started coming around a little bit and getting it closer to me and, and almost wanting to hold on to it. So I thought, that's it. Like That's the little bit of progress that I was looking for. Now we stop retrieving, we go to hold conditioning, and we're gonna get her through the process. And by the time we're done, we'll have it fixed. 
but it's going to take some time. And so I don't know how long. We had a second session with her yesterday, and she did really well. Um, so this is something that's going to take probably, I always tell people, the process start to finish, figure it to be like six weeks, maybe six to eight weeks. And if it comes in, if, it, if you get through it quicker, great. If you don't, who cares? But it's not about how long or how many times. I've had so many people since I started making some more posts and stuff about whole conditioning because we're doing all these things right now on it. I've had so many people make comments of really looking forward to following this. I failed at it. I had one, I saw one this morning that said, I failed at it twice now. I have another person that I know has struggled greatly with it. I know a ton of people that haven't gotten through it. And is it the end of the world? No, because you can always go back and do it. The problem is, is it's going to haunt you until you do get through it. So we're making this, I'm making an effort that we're going to try to talk more and more and more about hold conditioning, document more and more of it. Now, if you want to see some hold conditioning stuff that we've already done, go to YouTube because I hold conditioned, I don't know, three or four dogs live over the last um, two years probably. There's some stuff with Ellie. Look up, just look up whole, go to our, go to, I would, what is it, dog, it's dog bone hunter. Yeah, it's right? dog bone hunter. Um, just go to YouTube, you can go just in the search bar on the top right corner and just search hold conditioning and we've, everything. We've got a title that way, right? Yep. So we've, there are videos with Ellie and Kimber, their sisters. I, I mean, their sisters, their litter mates. They were very contrasting style dogs. So I hold conditioned them together. I did it live on Facebook, so it's one of these things where you, there is some interaction with, with people. Um, and I wanted to show the difference of those two dogs because they literally are sisters, but they literally have very different personalities. Um, so that's their Jet. I did some, there's a dog named Jet that we trained. He has got some hold conditioning stuff on there. That wasn't live, that was just recorded. Um, and then I posted them. There is uh, Dan, I think old Dan. Doesn't Spry have some too? Spry's got a bunch, yeah. Old Dan, I think we did, not the whole process, but <clears throat> old Dan is a dog that we trained for the, our friends at Raised Hunting. Um, we recorded some of his, and then Spry, live with Spry, I think we did two, three weeks of hers. Spry, whole conditioning was easy. So that's the hard part about doing Spry is people followed along with Spry's training and then they watched her whole conditioning and they went, man, that was really easy. And most of the time it's not. So if you don't just watch whole conditioning with Spry, watch her retrieving because her retrieving sucked. She was really bad at it. I didn't get a retrieve out of her before eight months, period. So the Live with Spry series was really good because it showed a lot of things I struggled with with her. It was also really good, but not so good in that it showed some of the things that she did really well, and she just did them very naturally, and that's not always going to be the case. And so, our hope, my the 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 only downside to live with Spry is that's one example, that's one dog, and she did some things good and some things not good. So now I've got four dogs that I'm training for clients. And they all do different things good and some things not so good. Hold conditioning is something each one of you will have to go through. And once you do, you're gonna go, man, this is, it's like, it's like getting a bunch of keys to a bunch of doors that you didn't have before. And now you can open them up and move forward. So 27, 29 minutes, I'm under my 30. So we gotta, we gotta wrap this. Uh, we don't have to, but I am going to try to keep the podcast part short. I know some people have sent me messages that make them longer, uh, perhaps. And then we've also got some things that are going to be, you're going to see come out podcast wise from us um, that are longer. So for those who are thinking they want longer stuff, it's coming. Uh, but that's it. Number eight, man, it's in the books. We we had a lot of reasons why we could. There were plenty of reasons why we couldn't have done the podcast this week. We're on the road. We don't have you know time. There's a lot of reasons why we don't can that we could say we're not going to do stuff, but we we figured out a way. We said, you know what? Let's just do it on the road. If the audio sucks, it'll be the last time we do it on the road. But I think it's something that 
I, as well as everyone listening, probably needs to take a, a good gut check at and go look at and go. There, there's a million reasons why we, we, why I could not do something. Figure out, figure out how to kind of check those off and just say, just suck it up and do it. There's, I, I, there's a post that I don't know when we did it, but it's, I did it a while back, and I, the words were, let, um, I don't even remember what they were. It was something about matching your ambitions with. Remember what it was? Remember how it went? I don't know. That might have been before my time. It was before intern Ben was here. <laughs> it was. Uh, so actions. Match yeah, your ambitions match your here. actions to your ambitions, and and so. I need to be reminded of that at times as well. I probably got to be reminded of the words as well. So, but so that's it. Podcast eight. We're in the books, talking a little bit of hold conditioning, and then you're going to see a lot more hold conditioning stuff through all of our channels uh, very soon. So continue. Uh, thank you for listening. Please do me a favor if you would. Uh, rate, I think it's rate the podcast and, and uh, subscribe. If you not subscribe, please subscribe. And if you do me a favor and share it with someone that you think these podcasts might help with, we continue to please send questions. Those are always great ways for us to build um, topics to talk about. So send a DM them, either Instagram or, or Facebook. Um, and I've got a list of them that have been compiling. So it's, it's just a nice way for us to be able to Um, address specific things that you guys are looking for so that's it have a great day and thanks for thanks for listening